having seen that a heat pump system comprises three distinct elements, the ground array, the heat pump, and the heat distribution system, it is vital the design of each and every element is handled by an expert. Designing a ground array can be the most challenging aspect of an installation. But thanks to Kenz's experience in the design of thousands of systems, you will receive comprehensive support. When considering ground arrays, you first need to determine the type of array that best suits your property and budget. Kenza typically recommends closed-loop systems for most residential and smaller commercial projects. These feature a water antifreeze mix circulating around pipework buried in the ground or submerged in water. Typically, the pipework is either laid in horizontal trenches as straight pipe or coiled slinkies, submerged to the bottom of a water source as slinky pond mats, or inserted as straight pipe into a vertical borehole. Choosing a ground array is influenced by numerous factors, but typically Kenza systems are fitted with slinky trenches due to their efficient design, ease of install and low cost. Slinkies are also preferred to straight pipe trenches as they require a fifth less digging, and unlike straight pipe arrays are cheaper to install. Both are recognised by MCS. If a body of water is available, pond mats should be considered, but usually slinkies are specified if there is no access to a suitable water source. Where there is insufficient land, closed-loop boreholes can be specified. Boreholes are also favoured in some retrofit applications where clients require minimal disruption. In these cases, Kenza and the installer will typically work alongside expert third parties to produce a suitable ground array design. The diversity of the UK's underlining geology demands a bespoke design issued with appropriate warranties to ensure the ground array design is sustainable. In all cases, the design of the ground array starts with a full appreciation of the property and the intended use of the heat pump. To find out more about how to size a heat pump and ground array, visit www.kenzaengineering.com forward slash installer zone, where you will find an interactive e-learning program, detailed guides, and further videos in this series. Having specified the heat pump to match the needs of the property, the size of the ground array will be influenced by many criteria, including the peak load, the running hours, the efficiency of the heat pump, and the ground conditions, including its moisture content, its temperature, and its thermal conductivity. Based upon these criteria, the latest MCS MIS 3005 installer standard utilizes lookup tables to establish ground array designs. These tables are an extension of the methodology successfully employed by Kenza since 1999 and provide a simple-to-use, conservative design. Of course, Kenza's designers and expert third parties have the opportunity to use sophisticated software for more complex projects, but these lookup tables are well suited for typical residential projects. To simplify the process, Kenza has developed a design wizard which automatically generates an MCS approved ground array design and quote once the relevant project details have been entered. Kenza's design wizard will ensure you deliver a sustainable ground array design as undersizing a ground array can result in significant performance issues. If an excessive amount of energy is extracted from the ground, the fluid's return temperature to the heat pump will fall, reducing the heat pump's thermal capacity and its ability to maintain the required room temperatures. Lower return temperatures will also compromise the heat pump's efficiency. For these reasons, the MIS 3005 installer standard dictates the return temperature should not fall below 0 degrees centigrade. Of course, if the ground array design is too small and the energy is not adequately replenished, it will simply freeze and the system will require significant remedial work. But rest assured, by working with Kenza, you will achieve a suitably sized and easy to install ground array design which satisfies MCS requirements and meets your customers' needs. Kenza heat pumps are routinely sized at 100% of the space heating load, so unlike other heat pumps, they do not include backup immersion heaters, which can result in high running costs, high carbon emissions, and are not renewable. Therefore, sufficient ground array is essential. In addition to providing space heating, ground source heat pumps can also supply hot water. Given the year-round and variable nature of domestic hot water consumption, Kenza utilizes conservative design assumptions to ensure the ground arrays are sized appropriately to meet your customers' hot water demands. So now let's look at installing a slinky trench. Slinkies are the most popular type of ground array, often chosen for their lower cost and ease of install compared to boreholes and straight pipes. 
A slinky is a series of 1 meter diameter coils of MDPE 32 mm pipe. Within a trench, the slinky pipe is laid in a series of coils and then looped back to the manifold where the pipe is laid straight. As a result, in each meter of slinky trench, there is just over 5 meters of pipe. Each ground array trench could be connected to one communal header trench. Within this header trench are the unraveled straight ends of the slinky pipes, which lead to and from the manifold. So, in effect, a 30 meter slinky contains 30 coils, plus two straight header pipes on each end, measuring 25 meters in length. If your header trench is shorter than 25 meters, do not cut the pipe. Instead, coil the excess pipe into the slinky or header trench. The lengths must be kept the same so that each slinky flows at the same rate. Slinkies can be installed vertically or horizontally. Vertical trenches should be 2 meters deep by 300 to 400 millimeters wide. Horizontal trenches should be 1.2 meters by 1.2 meters. Whilst less earth movement is required with a vertical installation, horizontal slinky trenches are easier to install and limit the risk of the pipes being crushed or buckling during backfilling. There are no noticeable performance differences between vertical or horizontal trenches. Ideally, slinky trenches should be located at 5 meter centers within the peripheral trench, at least 2.5 meters from any property border. The proposed location of the trench can be highlighted using a suitable spray paint or chalk. When considering the location for the trenches, bear in mind the need to temporarily deposit the soil. So here we have the most recent stuff we're taking out from trench 3. As we move back and beyond the digger to the right hand side there, that's the stuff we've brought in to backfill onto the pipe as and where we need it. Centre is the stuff we may use, but logistically it's where it may go also. Just beyond that on the left is the stuff that's definitely going. And then just to my left here is the stuff we may, may not use. We're not moving this yet because it will cost us to move it back. In case we need it, we can then put it into the trench. So all of this is a fairly simple process. It can be quite methodical and it doesn't have to be so spontaneous. I think confidence is the issue here. When you're removing vast amounts of soil from the ground, you need to know that you can get rid of this. And my suggestion would be to speak with a, the haulage company or know that where you can place goods on the available site to you. Slinky trenches can be dug by any competent ground worker. Don't be daunted by the amount of waste that comes out um, than the backfill as you're doing the project. This can be something that, as an engineer, you may not be used to, but it's very quick. It disappears. We, we can, in average soil, dig a 40 meter trench and remove the waste and backfill it in approximately six hours. Okay, one of the key things to consider on a project like this is the soil that you're taking out um, obviously where you're going to put it, but how you're going to reuse it. As you can see here, this stuff that's coming out is, is fairly ideal for compacting around the pipe. And it may not be necessary to buy in some sand or, or some second grade soil, which we're using as well. So as, as I pile this up alongside the trench, I'm considering as I go along, can I reuse this? And as you can see, just a few meters up from the, the first example I showed you, this is the stuff that's coming out very heavy chippings and we don't want this around the slinky. This, this is at risk of puncturing the slinky but just as importantly the thermal conduction to the slinky is going to be poor with all the air pockets. A best practice installation would feature a shallow 100mm layer of fine granular material protecting the pipes from sharp edges in the trench and eliminating the possibility of any air pockets between the pipe and the ground. Slinky ground arrays can also be installed up and downhill and can be bent into U or L shaped trenches. And as you can see how we've marked out this trench, it bends and we've had to do this because of the site conditions here. And with a little, little bit of planning you can overcome anything that you might consider as a problem. So long as you don't bend towards the next trench you've already laid, i.e. your centres aren't closer than 5 metres. A further header trench with a width of 500 millimetres and a minimum depth of 1 metre should be dug between the slinky trenches and the manifold location to accommodate all the header pipes. Once the header trench and slinky trenches are prepared, turn the first slinky onto its vertical edge and unroll from the opposite end of the coloured cable tie, which will unravel the short straight header pipe. 
ensure the first slinky coil is positioned alongside the start of the slinky trench. Continue unrolling and place the coils alongside the trench. Once all of the coils are unrolled, continue unrolling the long header pipe around the end of the final coil and back up the entire length of the slinky. Using the supplied cable ties, connect the coils together and connect the long header pipe to the sides of the coil. This will provide rigidity to the slinky and simplify positioning within the trench. And as you can see, once they're tie wrapped, they're very rigid. And you can lift them up and manipulate them quite easily. They tend to keep their shape very well. So don't be worried about handling this stuff. It's quite light, even on the entire length of 40 meters. Two of you can easily manage it. Carefully lower the slinky into the trench. For optimal performance, all the flow pipework within the header trench should be placed to one side and kept separated from the return pipework. It is required that the slinkies are pressure tested to BSEN 805 before the trenches are backfilled. For guidance on how to do this, refer to Kenza's slinky installation manual. A further 100 mm of fine granular material should be laid above the slinky coils and header pipework to provide protection against any sharp objects within the backfill material. Return the backfill into the trench, compacting carefully, ideally layer by layer. Be careful when backfilling material around a vertical trench installation to avoid buckling or damaging the coiled pipes. The performance of slinkies is enhanced in wetter ground. For this reason, positioning soakaways above the slinky coils is advantageous. For further detailed tips and guidance on slinky trenches, please refer to the Slinky Installation Manual available at www.kenzaengineering.com. Now let's look briefly at the remaining two types of closed loop ground arrays. Slinkies can also be secured to pond mats and sunk into lakes. This provides a particularly inexpensive ground array installation and is recommended wherever there is a sufficient body of water for the pond mats. Please contact Kenza for further information on this type of install. In the case of borehole installations, a drilling contractor will typically dig and install the vertical probe and trench to the manifold location. Therefore, as the installer, your input in the groundwork stage for borehole installations is greatly reduced. Lastly, in addition to closed loop ground arrays, you may consider an open loop system. Open loop systems extract energy from one water source before discharging it downstream or into a second water source. In an open loop system, the water itself is pumped through a second heat exchanger or an open loop rated heat pump. Open loop systems are generally used when there is a flowing river next to the property due to lower install costs. However, care has to be taken with extraction and disposal licenses. Depending on the filtration system, frequent maintenance may be required. Further information on ground array designs and installations can be found in our information library at www.kenzaengineering.com.